Hi guys, John with you and it's time now to start building. Yes, building the M3 Grant from Tamiya. Nice old kit from uh, 1974. Yes, I was nine years of age back in 1974. Um, and I was building kits back then as well. I was building the little 172 scale ones. And uh, I think the best I ever got was uh, none painting them and sticking the decals on straight onto the plastic because back then um, the only paints that were really readily available were the little tins of the um, gloss paints and the, the, the enamels which took ages to dry and as a kid no, you, you wanted to build it and play with it straight away um, and even in the building kind of took a bit long sometimes so you left off little bits and things uh, but I, I, I enjoyed it and that's where my that's where my interest sparked with it so anyway let's get started let's get onto the bench and uh, let's get stuck into this uh, lovely old Tamiya kit from uh, 1974 and it's the uh, British uh, M3 Grant okay so like for every video, or sorry, I said like every build, for every video. What am I saying? For every build, we start off with the instructions. Cause that's where you start with. Uh, you start with your instruction sheet. And step one. Step one has us making up the uh, the bogies. Okay. Now we've got those two wheels, two bogie sections, the top roller, and the, um, the suspension springs. Okay, they've got to go into that, and we've got to make six sets. Okay, straighten all that out there. Let me give a little close up of what I was talking about there. Okay, so we've got two wheels. There's our little suspension section there with the, uh, the, the loop springs. There's uh, our return roller along the top, and we've got our two sections there. So, I'm going to get them made, and I'm going to get the wheels together, and we'll come back, and we'll have a look at that. Okay, so, here we are. Um, I'm after getting step one done, which was the, um, the bogies, return, um, really thing, and the, uh, drive sprockety yokity bob. The thing that makes the tracks go vroom. Okay, so they're all done. We'll have a quick look at those, right? There's one of the um, boogies, right? Uh, very nicely done, I must admit, uh, as in the fit and all that. No problems whatsoever. They kind of went together very, very easily, very nicely. Um, no major sanding or anything cleaning up wise to be done in them. Did have. Um, seam line running down the centre of the wheels alright but that's uh, just quick quick rub of a sender got rid of those um, everything else went perfectly right so there's that you may not too worried about that sort of join mark in there because it's going to be hidden you're not going to see it so um, didn't bother me too much okay so there's our bogies right I have six of those made right there's our uh, Idler wheel. Okay. And here is our drive sprocket. The sprocket for the drivey. To make the tracks go roomy. So you can go places. Okay. So and again they went together very, very easy. Uh, no problems whatsoever with them. Um Yep. Yeah. So far so good no problems uh, everything looks nice everything went together well and the molding is absolutely not gorgeous and easy so on now to step two um, I might what I might do here is I might actually finish off this page and then we'll have a look at that rather than stopping at each each individual one because there's a couple of short ones really here right we've got in step two is the construction of the rear panel right um, we've got a couple of items there to go on to it. We've got tow hooks, 
uh, exhausts. Um, I don't know what they are, but I, I, I'd say they're air, air, clean, air filters and cleaners and all that kind of stuff, good stuff. Um, you've also got the construction of the fenders, the left and right fender. Um, there's lights to go on, light guards, some tools, lights again and light guards. Um, then in step three, we've got the construction of the 75 millimeter gun. Right, so we've got the um, the little mantlet thing, majiggy there. Right, we got the barrel. We've got a little uh, end piece there to go on the barrel. Remember when I was doing the uh, the unboxing for it, I said you could drill out the barrel. There's no need to with that piece because that's more than likely going to be a hollow piece. I haven't looked at it yet, but if that's a sort of a hollow piece, when that sits onto that, you'll have your um, you'll have your uh, your hole. <laughs> nice to have a hole but it'll be a hole in the end of that anyway hopefully um, then we've got the uh, transmission cover right this is the whole front there but I'm being technical here I know that that's the transmission cover so we'll be getting the transmission cover done now just in case I, I had them out of vision right uh, and then we're just putting them on right we're putting on the transmission cover we're putting on our wheels uh, our bogies and uh, dry sprocket and all that and the rear panel so next time you see that it'll be all done done as far as there and uh, we'll have a, a quick discussion on how all that went okay so let's uh, let's carry on now as you can see from all the green I've all done okay I'm up as far as step five I've all that done that's all been assembled up. So we'll have a look at that all together. Okay, so there we are, the wheels are on. Um, the bogies are glued in place. I haven't glued in the, uh, the turn rotors and the, um, not the turn rotors, but the, uh, the drive sprocket and the idler. I haven't glued them in yet. Um, reason is I might have problems putting on the track in just in case. I said I wouldn't bother gluing in the uh, these. I'm saying that that seems to be stuck, but I'm not sure if we can, we can fix that after. All right, okay, so we got our fin the fenders on, um, the transmission cover is on, and all that. Uh, the the, um, the back there, the entrance into the engine, exhaust pipes, they're all done. You know, everything uh, typical to me, it fitted perfectly. Um, if I had to say that there was any problems, the only problems I could possibly think of that there was, um, seam lines, um, you know, mold seam lines, there was quite a few of them. Um, but, again, there was no problem, everything kind of, uh, a quick rub of a sanding stick and that was that problem solved. There wasn't any major, uh, they weren't deep and the plastic is soft enough so they just took a quick uh, rope, got rid of them. Um, there's the gun. Okay, and you, the fit was so good you can't even see the join there on that for the end piece. And that was a little piece that fitted over the gun, as we can see here. Right, you got that. That around. So we're after that getting fitted and glued. Perfect. Really, really happy with how that came out. That is lovely. Okay, so there's our gun, and it uh, it uh, goes up and down. Oh, we're short of the uh, shooty bits of pieces that come out of the front of it. Okay, so that'll be fitting in then in there like that at some stage. There we go, that fits in there. There's more pieces to go on to it. That one. Yep. Take the little one off, uh, off screen. Okay, that'll be fitting in here. That's what I was trying to say. That, be fit, that fits in there. And okay. Now, back, back to the instructions. Where do we carry on? Alright, so we got to figure out the figure. Am I going for the figure inside or the figure sitting 
on the cupola are basically the figure in the turret. No, I've decided I'm going to go for this guy here with the uh, the sitting on the cupola. Right, now once that's decided, we've got to construct the um, the upper hull. Okay. Now there's quite a lot going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do step six first. Right. Uh, we'll, I'll do step six. We'll have a look at it discuss that then if there was any problems or any fit issues or anything like that right so we've got our main piece it's all nice it's one piece here it is here okay it is a one piece top this is nice you know it's handy okay and we've got our hatch covers and our doors right um we've got to fit the uh I've already fitted this piece here, the right fender. I'm already, already, already after fitting that onto the uh, onto the kit. Whether I should have or not, now I do not know. But uh, judging by that, I don't think I should have. Oops! I will get around it. We'll get around. We'll figure it out. Um, might have to leave off these these pieces here until after I've uh, attached together okay anyway we've got hatches we've got our fuel filler caps we got this uh, armor piece here around the side and we've got then the uh, the storage box in the back here um, there's tools then to go on for other little bits and pieces so we'll get that bit done first We'll have a look at it, then we'll do uh, 7 and 8, then after that. Um, there isn't very much more to do after that, just uh, I'm sort of running out of pieces to put on. Like I said, it was, uh, it, it, there isn't very, very many pieces. That is the one thing about the uh, old Tamiya kits, whereas, say, the modern, more modern kits now would have you sort of all these flat surfaces here would be a separate piece, so you'd have 1, 2, three four five six seven eight possibly that piece there nine ten you know what would what is one piece now and some kits would probably be about ten or eleven pieces if it's a dragon kit it's probably about twenty or thirty pieces but um the ultimate one piece so it's a quick build very enjoyable build um it's getting the old mojo back so i'm quite happy with that um, the moulding is absolutely fabulous on it, as you can hear. You know, that those rivets are grand and deep. Really, really are. Really crisp moulding in those, I must admit. Okay, so I get, uh, I get that done. Step six. And we come back and have a look at it. And we'll see how, how it's going along. Okay, so literally just glued in the last little piece there. Um, now, it's time, now it's time to kind of mark them off, mark off what I've done. I've done that, that, psh, psh, that went there, that went in there. Uh, I did B2, that went down there. B44, 43, 27. No, oh, nicely marked off. And everything else. So I did step uh, six and step seven, and then I I filmed. Oh, excuse me, I filmed them, or well, I thought I did, but it never came out. So therefore, I mustn't have done it properly for some weird reason. And then I went on. Like I, I didn't bother to check or anything like that. I went back in thing. I carried away, and I'm after finishing it off because it it didn't really take that long to get it done, and. Uh, it was only when I went to press record on this thing that I realised, oh, I hadn't, um, I hadn't recorded the last one. So anyway, here we go. That's what all this looks like. Now I noticed that uh, I know that the gun is supposed to be in place, but um, typical John, the fender here. Right, it's a bit far away. I'll bring it up. Bring it up so you can see it. Right. 
fender here gets mounted up in under that and onto these here but what happened was I went off and I fitted the fender to the base of the yoke okay that's this fender here I, I sort of pre-fitted it made a bit of a bubble uh, sort of fitted it a little bit too early but everything goes in nice you know, it just sits in the place absolutely beautifully okay There we go. So when that gun now is in place, I can I can do the whole lot at the end. Um, granted, if you pick up the kit and look underneath, you're going to have all these big gaps in here. But I mean, the track's going to go along there, so you're not going to see it, and you're not going to be lifting it and looking at it like that anyway. So um, yeah, th that's where the old kits differ from the newer kits, as in the older kits or the newer kits, should I say. They go into all the detail with with the uh, you know closed in up here, all this in here under here, all the gubbins that would be under there would be there. Um, slight little things, little things like that. But um, you know, for 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 what's going to be what they call a shelf queen, as in it's going to be sitting on a shelf, looking looking pretty. Um, there's no problem literally no problem there whatsoever I have no problem with it and uh, I'm sure most of you don't either okay so what's next what's like? I'm only leaving that there because these things here they're I don't want to get them damaged so by sitting them on there they're not going to, they're not going to get any damage done to them we'll push that to the side oh I also did the figure as well okay there's the figure um, not bad, not bad at all. Um, quite good for the uh, for the time. To me, a figures of its era, should I say? Um, to me, and noted for their, their their bad figures over the years, and um, this being say a 1974 figure, it's actually quite good. Okay, so let's see if we can get a little bit, a bit of light on it. Should we be able to sort of see the face? Yeah, as you see, it's not bad at all. It's even got the little cap badge and all in it there. And the detail is quite nice. So that should paint up, um, should paint up grand. I should have no problems in the painting up of that. We'll see how it looks like. So, there's our figure anyway, right? No, carry on. We're on next to the turret, right? we got to make up the gun. This is the, uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the eighth. What, what, which gun is this now? Doesn't say. Does not say. Um, I should know what type of gun it is to be quite honest with you, but uh, fortunately I do not. No. 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 And it doesn't say it, so therefore it's my own fault for not not. Uh, not remembering what gun goes on to it, as in what size of gun it is. Um, oh well, anyway. <laughs> right, we got to do the uh, the shooty thing onto the turret. Put the two turrets uh, halves together. Right. We're not using this piece here because that piece there is only when you're using the uh, half figure. A um, couple of little bits and pieces to go onto the turret. And then it's just the case of fitting the turret on then step 10. And that's it, that's it. So that's all we got to do is just the last few bits of the turret. So I'll crack on, I get them done. Um, we'll have a look at them, see what they all look like. And um, yeah, we've got the tracks to do as well. Forgot about the tracks. Um, the side skirts, we shall side skirts here. I won't be putting them on to the very very end until I have the tracks done and everything else. So usually what I do is I put I make the tracks up, I paint the bottom section here, get all of that in there painted, then put the tracks on. I paint the tracks separately obviously, put the tracks on then. Um when the tracks are on then just kind of a quick masking over the tracks. 
assemble the top, assemble my side skirts, and then I can paint away then the rest of it. Um, still haven't decided whether I'm going to go for that uh, tree tone camo one, which was the, uh, the Battle of Gazala, or the uh, El Alamein one, which was just the uh, plain desert yellow. Now the thing is, I do have two of these. Okay, I do have two, two kits. So whichever one I'm going to do this in, I'll do the other one, the other scheme. Okay, so that covers both schemes for both these um, these grants. So I carry on. I get the turret done. We'll have a look at that. Um, then it's a case of into the painting for the uh, the lower half, getting everything assembled. Then uh, and then the rest of the painting. So. Like I said, I'll carry on now, I'll get the turret made up and uh, we'll see what that looks like. We'll see what it looks like and um, we'll show it to you. Sure we might as well. So, i get the turret done, we'll come back to them and have a look at it. I'm going to start by putting the uh, the two halves together of this because that's going to have to dry overnight I'd say. Um, and sand it off then, so hopefully, hopefully the, the, they'll come together nicely and not gaping holes or anything like that but so far the fit on that has been absolutely beautiful so let's, let's, let's hope that the uh, the torah goes together well as well okay so i get that done we come back and we'll have a look at it okay so i'm after getting the uh the torrid fixed Finished, fixed, as I say, fixed. Okay, I'm after sticking on an aerial, and I'm after changing the figure down a bit as well. I'm after placing, putting him inside as well. He's not glued into place yet because I want to um, fiddle around there with with the uh, with the headphones, and he's got a microphone. He's going to have a microphone in his hand as well. That's that's still on the on the sprue. I haven't taken it off yet, but uh, that'll just a bit of uh, thin wire and I'll just wire them down and just sort of dangle them down I've done it before with other things um, it's actually quite easy you just drill in there and drill it there a bit of super glue in same with the microphone just little drill up and attach a bit of wire and in they go okay so there's the uh, the turret oh, look at the join there no, that is after being sanded and all that, but wow, talk about a perfect fit. That was absolutely a beautiful, beautiful fit. Really, really was. Um, left no lines whatsoever. Now, there were seam lines on the gun, on the small machine gun. As you can see, I drilled out the barrel of that one. Okay, now, 37mm, so I found out what it was. Also, I've got two ejection or sort of a you know, big round ejection marks there. I'm going to kind of uh, send them off. I only noticed them after I glued these on. So I'm a quick rub of a rub of a sander. I mean, there's a sanding stick there. Very very lightly. Gone. Okay. Well, there is no detail on the inside of them, so I'm going to uh, look at a couple of videos. Um, the chieftain does a nice one on it. Um, as far as I know, we've got uh, on one side there's just a latch, and it's a very very simple latch that's on these. Um, I have to pop him out to do that properly. He's a tight fit in there. Okay. Um, if I didn't take him out, I would have ended up with uh, streaks. Little circles. You don't end up with marks then. When you're sending. So as far as I know, at this side here, you've just got a little, uh, little latch, 
just a bit of a bit of, a bit of plastic there will do for that. And on this side here, then you've got um, a, a vision um, block thingy majiggy for the uh, for periscope. No, um, how I'm going to do that, I don't know. And it's a case of wood, uh, wood sort of leaving it off altogether. Be just as good. I'm also after bit of stretch sprue there for an area. Normally go for my uh, wire one but I decided to go for a stretch sprue one on this uh, at this time. Um, yeah I'm quite happy with it so far. Really really working out nice. Um, like I said just want a few little bits and pieces here just to make it look look right. I mightn't go for the actual vision block there for the commander but uh, I will go for kind of a little latch system there. Um, Believe it or not, all it is is actually is a sort of a, a swing over latch. You know, when they're closed over, you just pull it across. So it's quite simple. Um, I also fill the uh, the gun part up here. Okay, it goes up and down and turns. Okay. Um, I I, I realised that I didn't actually need to have it on the. Uh, for it to fit and um, yeah I'm, I'm happy with that 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 that's working out nicely for me so next step now for this is uh, believe it or not I just put on the tracks but before I put on the tracks I'm going to have to get the uh, underside painted so I'm going to get this painted separately just the sides here both sides and the wheels and the return rollers along the top of those get them all painted up then I can um, I, I can attach the top section, which very very simple. It just goes straight onto it. Um, that's why I'm not going to bother painting the top section here. Just just the sides under here. Um, once they're painted, then I can fit, fit on my tracks. The tracks will be painted separately as well. I can pop this on and fit on the uh, the fenders. And then once the fenders are on, then I can go for the, uh, the full paint job on that. Um, so basically, that's it for, uh, for for video number one. Okay. Um, the construction part of it. I know it's not all fully constructed, as in it's not all uh, fully put together. But um, I do have to do some painting. Oh, even that fits in there nicely. So it's it's very nice. It really is. Uh, lovely fit. Um, yeah, it's the old, old Tamiya kit. So um, you know you're you're not going to have uh, you know all the sort of the fitted detail underneath and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, it, it, you're going to have a nice model for a finish. Paint it up well and uh, put the two side by side. That side by side with um, with a dragon or one of the other ones. Once they're painted, you won't know what which is which, to be quite honest with you. Um, I had an old Tamiya Panzer IV that I did, and I did a Dragon Panzer IV, and once they were both painted and put together, I don't know which is which. Believe it or not, I actually don't know which is which. I literally have to go back to the videos to see which one is which. So, just goes to show you, do you know what I mean? The old kits are just as good as the new ones. Um, yeah, you've a lot more work, more, more modelling and things like that with the newer kits. Loads of little fiddly bits to put on, things like that. Um, but the old kits, you end up with a nice one. And it's a good build, a nice quick build to get the old mojo back and things like that as well. So, like I said, that's it for this video. Join me in the next one, where we'll get it all painted up. So, in the meantime, don't forget to stay tuned to the channel for further updates. Um, Thank you for watching this one. Uh, go back over some of my older videos and there's some uh, some nice uh, nice builds there. Um, I will get back on to doing the the Phantom um, after this. I, I'll give it another blast. Just the last few decals to do to that, and then the weathering and, and things like that. Um, so in the meantime, come buy yourself a kit, build it and enjoy it as John signing off and I will catch you on the next one. Stay safe and be nice. Okay? 
See you soon.